I just realized that I've been shooting this video the whole time with my headphones. <laughs> I'm not gonna shoot it again. <laughs> Hi, hello and welcome to another edition of China Teacher, where I share with you what it is like to be an English teacher in China. Today, we are going to be talking about discipline in the classroom and the role that you play as a teacher given the fact that you are in a Chinese culture where discipline comes in all different colors. So if you want to know what things you will face and how to handle them, don't go anywhere because we're going to be rolling that intro. See you on the other side. Be a real bad boy. <laughs> Welcome back guys, it's the second video of 2018 and I hope that you're still hanging on to your New Year's resolutions, okay? I hope that you still have them by the fridge with a very strong magnet and you stick to them up this year, okay? So when talking about discipline, um, there's there's two events that have happened in the last month um, that I wanted to that kind of like bring this topic to mind. Um, about a month ago, um, in the school where I teach, there was a kid who stabbed another kid. Uh, we're talking like minors here, so I'm not gonna show any videos or anything or any reports. But that's that's an element of discipline that gets way way out of hand. So. Yeah, uh, the police was involved and all kinds of things. So what would happen if you were the teacher uh, in that classroom? Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about those things. And another thing that happened was I had a situation with a kid in my in my classroom that um, this kid is very playful, so to speak. Um, and uh, she likes to do something that we're going to discuss. She likes to punch the teacher, hit the teacher. Um, it is something that you, you find a lot here in China. And I should say that um, having taught in many other countries, um, I really haven't taught kids any other, any other place except America. I was for, for almost a year there and I worked with Mexican kids, um, grade two or three, and none of them had this, this thing about hitting the teacher, punching the teacher, kicking the teacher. It's only here in China that I have seen this. Uh, I may be wrong. If I'm wrong, please correct me. But um, I, I, to me, this is surprising. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. This girl likes to punch me, likes to hit me, likes to kick me, likes to any any chance she has to to kind of hurt me, she will. Of course, in a playful way. She's not doing it in a mean way. Um, but then. We're going to talk about how to draw the line. The situation that happened is that I, as I was collecting the books because I wanted to do an activity um, with all of them paying attention to me. So I collected the books. I asked her, hey, can I have your book? And she just threw it in my face and like the, the top of the book, like the, the, the thick part, right? The, the hard part hit me on top of my face. So I just grabbed the book and threw it away as a reaction <clears throat> and I yelled at her. And I said, hey, I told her in Chinese, you have no manners. And um, we're going to talk about how I address discipline situations um, and, and what you could do when you're faced with situations similar, similar to that. Um, what that happened was that the, since we have cameras in the classrooms, the father actually asked that we give him the video because he was going to post it on media because I was causing his, his daughter um, psychological damage. I did. I gave him the video. Um, to my knowledge, nothing has gone online. I haven't heard anything from anybody. You know what I mean? It's like um, I t we talked to his wife, who is also a teacher. And well, she was understanding of the situation. So I apologize for my reaction. I apologize for being so um, uh, loud and maybe so intense um, because we're going to talk about one of the strategies that I use, one of the things that I use when I have a, a, a discipline issue that goes beyond uh, what I find acceptable. But the interesting thing was that the father saw nothing wrong with what she was doing. Uh, she was like, it's fine, she's just being playful. So that's what we're going to talk about today, okay? How to deal with the difference in perception in terms of what's okay and what's not okay, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, okay? So 
let us jump in into some of the topics that I think are important for discussion. So one of the main issues for me is to determine what is a transgression to, to what is acceptable. For me, there are three things that I'm trying to, to obtain. I want the kids to be quiet, uh, to be silent, to listen to me so I don't have to force my voice too much. Um, if I'm teaching at a school, then that's going to be 40 kids. What do you do? Use a microphone. Don't, don't kill yourself. Just ask the school to give you a microphone and use a microphone because otherwise you, you will lose your voice in no time. There are exceptions. People who are very, very, they can project their voice very, very far, but those are exceptions. Um, the second thing to do if you're working in a school and you want silence um, is work with your TAs, work with your teacher assistants. Um, ask them, explain to them what is it that you expect of them. Usually there's always a teacher assistant when you're working with little kids. So make it clear that at this moment I want silence. Let her do the heavy duty, uh, the heavy load, uh, the, the carrying of that responsibility. Um, so that you can get your silence. The second thing that I want is at some points I want focus. If I am reviewing material, maybe I don't need you to be too focused. If I am um, just doing a drill uh, with a group of kids, because I like to break the, group, the, the drills or the practice with groups of kids then, or individuals, then I just need this person to be focused. If the others uh, are, out of, are not focused, then it's, it's all right. I can handle that as long as they're quiet. But for example, there are instances where I really want them to pay attention. If I'm explaining a grammar point, if I'm explaining an exercise, if I am explaining uh, a rule, for those minute to two minutes in which I'm presenting, I really want them to do nothing but listen to me and pay attention to me and try to understand. So you need to be able to communicate to your TA, hey, I need focus right now, help me get focus. And, and she will convey that message to the kids and they will pay attention. That's an important thing to, to recognize. What kind of activity are you doing and do you need focus here? Um, the third thing that I, that I hope to get is production. And, and that's another discipline issue. Sometimes you'll have kids that either don't want to talk or are playful in their production. So you ask them a question and I, I have kids that answer that, 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 and like just speak English. So, what to do there? Again, work with your, if you're in a, in a school, work with your TA. But let her enforce uh, the discipline and the, and the rules so that you can get the kid to actually give you the answer that you want. It is very important to identify a couple of aspects that will help you to carry your lesson um, and, and gain the focus constantly. Let's talk about those. I think that one of the most important things is to have a commanding voice. Not shouting and yelling commands, but a, a voice that instills authority, that, that tells you, hey, I'm talking, I'm saying something important. A voice that, um, I don't know how to describe it, but you probably know what I mean. When, when dad um, gets at the table and, and gives you, hey, man, like, Fernando, you, you know that that tone is the tone of authority. So find your tone of authority, find that and, and use it when you need it. That's very important. Find a tone of voice that I I indicates seriousness. This is the time for discipline. This is the time for being focused and concentrated. And secondly, um, if you want the kids to pay attention to you, make sure that you have plenty of activities. Forget about just winging it, you know what I mean? Uh, walk into the classroom like, oh, I'll see what I'll do. That is the, the easiest recipe for discipline issues. Um, depending on the age, kids will have shorter or longer attention span. So if you're working with five-year-olds, you're, you're looking at five to ten minutes, I would say, uh, and sometimes even less. And as they start getting older, then their attention span goes a little bit higher goes longer so um, if you're teaching 10 year olds you could keep them focused for about 15 minutes at a time uh, but at that time you start to lose them there's another thing this is just 
like general guidelines. There are exceptions. There are kids that can stay focused longer and kids that can stay focused a lot shorter. So you need to play with that. Um, also, an in interesting thing to understand is that the focus in a group sometimes is not homogenous. So you've got a few kids that are focusing and a few kids that are not focusing, but they will refocus um, as you continue to explain. Carry your, carry your lesson with a commanding voice that indicates when they need to be paying attention to you, when they need to be focused and quiet and listening, and at the same time plan enough activities given the length of your lesson and given the attention span of the kids that you're teaching. So say for example 45 minutes with five-year-olds you're going to need about 10 activities, 10 different activities. Um, another good idea is, whenever possible, to apply what is called what I call change of setting. So if the kids are sitting down, ask them to stand up and do something. If the kids are um, on one corner, uh, move them to another corner, if it's whenever possible, right? So a change of the setting um, will reshift and reset their focus at the center we don't work with large numbers, we only have six children. So this is a lot easier to move the kids around. So uh, we're sitting on the floor, then we sit on the table, then we stand up, then we, yeah. So it's a little bit easier for me to change settings um, when I'm at the center, but that's a very important tool. So let's talk a, lo a little bit about some of the main concerns that I have when I'm teaching little kids. Uh, the first one is has to do with expenses expensive stuff um, for example I bring my phones into the office sometimes I bring my sunglasses into into the classroom or sometimes well just the equipment that we have uh, at the center we have these rather expensive touch screen kind of boards that uh, that we use and well those things are rather expensive there's in the thousands of dollars and sometimes kids they they want to play with those things or they, they think that they're toys. So what to do? Well, the best way to protect your things is to be very clear with the kids. Uh, don't touch my things. Don't touch my things. Don't touch my things. This is something that you say constantly whenever there's a slight um, <laughs> offense. And a hey, remember, don't touch my things. Don't touch my things. We don't touch my things. We don't touch the teacher's things. Um, another thing that it's more institutional will be to um, have signage, have little signs put around the classroom telling them what they need to do. Be quiet in class. There's a sign over here. Uh, remain seated. Yeah. So having these bilingual signs all over the classroom and on the equipment um, helps, doesn't prevent but it helps to at least you are doing your, your duty. You are informing the kids uh, what they shouldn't do. So in the event of a situation, you hey, we told them, but he didn't pay attention. The same applies to things that are dangerous. For example, at the center, we designed the center, so we did all the decoration and everything. Um, a very simple thing, for example, something that is overlooked in many, many centers, um, power plugs, right? The, the power outlets. Um, we set them pretty high. I just realized that I've been shooting this video the whole time with my headphones. <laughs> I'm not going to shoot it again. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. I don't have too much time. I can't reshoot this. I'm gonna have, it's going to have to go like this. Um, so the power outlets, as I was saying, uh, they're placed at about 1.5 or 1.8 meters. So they're out of reach of little kids. They won't play with them. They won't touch them or anything like that. But there are other things that might be dangerous, like, for example, fire extinguishers. Or we have um, windows that open to where the classrooms are on the second floor. So we have bars and whatnot. But that might be dangerous. So kids that are that are um, standing on the chairs and they might fall, you know, it, all these things that become a liability are, are part of what I call discipline. I'm very, very forceful in enforcing anything that will keep the kids safe. Um, stairs, no running on stairs, no, none of that, right? So yeah, it's, it's important to also uh, apply your discipline not only to things that are expensive, but to things that are dangerous. Now, um, the other thing that, that 
is important for me at the center is, well, when I need the kids to pay attention, as I mentioned before, to be focused because I'm going to explain something. In this case, I, I break a little bit the, the, the flow of the lesson. To, okay, so I stand up or I move around or I move the kids around so that that gives everybody a clear break and a clean start to focus on to what we're doing what were we going to start doing so that's one thing that i do when i want them to listen to me because i'm going to explain something i always do a change of setting so that they reset their their focus and i start from scratch and the third thing it relates to what happened with this with this student uh, at the center it has to do with heating heating the teacher um, as I said, there's, and I'm sure if you're taught in China, you've had this, that they punch you, they kick you, they pull you, they, um, I have kids that, that like to pinch me, things like that. So, um, it, it's, it, it's really important that you establish what the red line is, that you let them know what is considered playful, what is not considered playful. For example, I allow high fives. Yeah. So in this high fives, um, the kids just whack my hand um, so hard that I have had two surgeries. I don't know if I can show here because it's it's hurt. And this is the last one. Yeah, you can see the scar here. Um, the kids hit me so hard that they, they do damage to my hand. So. I'm not doing that anymore. Remember, when the kids are, teach, uh, uh, are hitting you, the most important thing is to let them understand that first of all, it is not okay. And the biggest mistake will be for you to make them believe that it is funny, right? Because then you are blurring the line. You are causing the problem. So what are the three things or four things that I normally do? First, I'm going to make a noise like, to regain their attention. Hey, oi, hey, or I bang the table, you no, know, like, yeah, just just something to, to refocus them, to get everyone's attention. Obviously a little bit louder than that, but not, not a shout, but like, hey, kind of thing. Uh, the other one is I have a look. Yeah, when I'm upset, I turn on that look, I go, really, really, deep and focused and silence. I use silence instead of noise to, to let them know that uh, I'm upset. So what follows a, hey, is a deep silence. Uh, I square off a little bit, you know, like, and, and I look intently at them. Then I'm like, hey, that was wrong. That was not good. That was, that was inappropriate. So they know that there's a shift, there's a change in, in my physical disposition to let them know that's not appropriate. Uh, the third thing that I do, for example, if, if for any reason I let it go too far and they're just too loud uh, and, and no level of, I don't want to go through the effort of straining my voice, for example, or banging a table or something, what I do is I'll, I'll remove myself from the picture. I literally, I just move back, silence, cross my hands, uh, cross my arms, sorry, and, and I just keep looking at them until one of them realizes that I have done something, that I'm upset. So that kid will start spreading the word, oh, the teacher is angry, oh, the teacher is upset, Ooh. and I wait until absolute silence is achieved, give the look, don't do that again, blah, blah, blah and then continue with my lesson. So those are like the three things that I do. Now, when do I shout? And I do shout. <clears throat> when, when there's something dangerous about to happen. When something has really, really crossed the line. Uh, is causing pain to me or somebody else, or, or is dangerous to me or to somebody else. That's when I will shout, because I want the action to stop immediately. I cannot risk um, the, 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 the kid hurting himself, hurting somebody or hurting me. So that's when I shout. Um, some people ask about what about physical, uh, physical punishment. I don't believe in physical punishment, but I believe in, well, sometimes you get physical reactions to pain. 
Um, I had a kid once who who <laughs> punched me in the nuts, and my reaction was just to to not smack, but to kind of like push him aside um, on his head, just just grab his head and push him aside to to go back to the topic physical. Uh, discipline, I don't believe in that. Um, uh, is the, the line there is very, very thin, uh, so I don't even go close to that. Has it happened? Yes, there are kids who have hurt me, and my reaction has been um, a, a physical reaction. Uh, but it is that it's just a reaction, and you can't control that reaction sometimes. So let us tie this up with the general. Uh, topic which is the Chinese culture. Um, the truth of the matter is when you talk to some parents about some of the things that, that, that happen, well it's, it's really really tough because some parents have this emperor or empress, now my little princess, because they only can have one child, they're extremely overprotective or they have this ideas that uh, the kids need to be protected that they have very different ideas on how to discipline children. Um, this father of this little girl that I had the issue with, he was accusing me of giving her physical, physical, I'm oh, sorry, not physical, psychological damage. And I'm like, look, I pushed the book away. I yelled at her. And what I yelled was, you have no matters. I'm uh, sorry, you have no manners in Chinese. I just said, ni meo li mao squared off, look at her, I was pissed off, I was angry. Um, how long do I stay there? Um, I don't know. Uh, I was there like for 20 seconds. Then that same day there was a kid that was laughing at the whole situation. That is, well, not challenging my authority but not recognizing my authority. So I banged the table and I looked at him like, this is not a laughing matter. And I carried the silence. I just wanted to let everybody know that there was a huge red line that was crossed. Um, so I recomposed myself for a minute. I put the books away. I picked up the book from the floor, put it away. Sat down, started organizing my activity, cooling down, right? And then I turned around and I, I told the girl, like, look, come closer. Come sit by the table. I grabbed her hands and I looked her in the eyes and said, like, look. Um, I'm not angry at you and I don't want you to be scared but don't do that again. I say this in Chinese, Will, with my poor Chinese. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one thing. What happened exactly at that moment is that my assistant came in and said like, oh, the father wants his daughter to go out and then he asked me to go down and then we had this conversation. He asked for the video, I gave him the video and I don't know what's happened to that. Uh, what's happened with that. Um, the reason why I gave him the video uh, is because, well, he's entitled to it, number one. And number two, I, I, I don't think I did anything wrong. I mean, I, I didn't hit the kid, I didn't punch the kid. I yelled at the kid, hey, you have no manners. Mm, I think that's within um, our uh, role as teachers to do. Um, um, so, well, that's the, that's the video. I wanted to discuss um, what I do to get discipline in the classroom and um, I would like to, well, get to know what do you think about this particular situation. I'm not going to show the video, although I do have the video, but I don't think it's appropriate. Um, if the father ends up posting it somewhere, then I will, but for the time being, I'm not, I'm not considering doing that. It's just telling you what happened and, well, I have no... Perhaps, yes, <laughs> I could have reason to lie. But the fact that nothing has happened tells you that there's nothing to... to I, I have nothing to worry about, really. So, um, let me know, how do you handle discipline? And have you ever had any issues um, related to, well, dangerous things that happen or stuff like that? All right? So, well, guys, leave your comments down below and uh, remember to like, comment and share this video to your heart's content. Sorry for the gaff <laughs> that I was recording <laughs> with the with headphones on. But hey, I hope that the sound came out right. It sounded good uh, when I was recording. Um, well, that's it for today. And see you on the next video. Bye for now.